what we have here is a Dynavox portable record changer, high fidelity, apparently. It's using a voice of music record changer. I just did one of these on a Fanola. It worked great. This one set up a little bit differently as the cord is coming out of the back side of this. Now, two prong cord isn't in terrible shape. Let's see what works. Um, okay. Remove the thing by hand. It's going to fall out of there. Uh, looks like the power for this. Power is on the front. The other one I had, the power was just as soon as you turn it on inside. Oh, we've got light. That is getting dimmer. The tubes were glowing. One tube is glowing. Others not so much anymore. We got nothing. This is in the on position. trying to move. All right, I'm going to shut this down before anything bad happens. This is going to need a complete overhaul. So when I redid the Fonola, it had um, a screw here and here that you could actually turn by hand, um, remove, and pull this whole unit out. When I loosen these up, all it ends up doing is pressing this tight down against the board. So I'm thinking that I'm going to have to remove those two screws and these two screws. having to pull back on the turntable here as it's just over the screw. But it's only on springs, so it moves out of the way just fine. All right. And this is what we've got. VM changer. Actually looks just like the one on the Fanola, except how it's actually attached. On the Fanola, it had a plug that plugged into the amp. This one is it wire nuts, two fifty C five tubes, and can't quite see what that one is. Pastor can. Looks like it's got three caps in it. All right. I'm going to have to take this apart. See what I can do here. So I actually found this under the turntable. This is supposed to be backlit off of some other thing. Duotone. Nothing duotone on this. This is just sitting back there. So someone's probably been in here before. This is going to be fun. Now we're free. 
looks like there's some vent holes at the bottom. Looks like this whole thing comes out by those screws. There's signs of this flocked turntable all over this thing. <clears throat> Not a real fan of these flocked turntables. Stuff gets everywhere. So we're gonna move this thing out of the way. Most of the cleanup is just going to be cleaning up all that stuff. Well, the rubber is still soft. I'm going to have to undo this later in order to get at that gear. Actually, we'll do it now. Don't lose that. Alright. I'm gonna pop this cap off the back. So it's a, it's a rubber. I think they were rubber. So one metal, three rubber, and a lock. And then that just comes off. And we have the same thing over here. Now this board comes off. Looks like this pulls off. And it also looks like it's broken in half. Well, that's too bad. What are the chances I'm going to remember to put that thing back on? Well, I'm going to put that on as a placeholder. And this will help remind me. kind of soft but it's leaving behind little remnants of itself first thing that comes off is this everything is covered in flocking then this Clean. There's a ball bearing inside here, which is now in my hand. We're going to free up this mechanism. And one of my kids was nice enough to lose part of my tool set. Oh, who am I kidding? It's probably me. So. I've just been sort of makeshifting this. Resetting this spring at the end is always fun. Don't let it get you down now. Okay, with those three screws out, we're gonna work this loose. First one of these I did, I actually practiced this part a few times taking it off, putting it back on, just so I can make sure that I got it right before I put it away. 
this whole thing's gonna need to be cleaned. This piece right here is super gummy and it's riveted on. So it's really tricky to clean. You just gotta soak it. And that lock washer I took out the top is for this. And you can see all that needs cleaning. So that is what I'm gonna do. Oh, this doesn't even move. It's just frozen there. I mean, it does move, but it doesn't move on its own. And it's got a spring. These move okay. This moves okay. These often do. They just need a bit of oil, a bit of cleaning. Okay. All that stuff. This is the bad boy. If you'd like to watch a video on how to clean this turntable to get it working, check out Jordan Pierce's videos on YouTube. They are the videos that I learned this from, and there's no reason to reinvent the wheel here. He does a great job. Uh, the biggest challenge for me on this project was redoing the amplifier. Um, I thought that the crystal cartridge in this machine was bad, and so I ordered a new one from Voice of Music. It turns out that this was just in a real need of an overhaul. Um, I, Under the guidance of the folks on the Antique Radio Forum, I replaced the Selenium Rectifier. Uh, speaking of which, I now have 99 uh, diodes, if anyone needs any. Um, I recapped the Bumblebee caps, which were all out of spec. Um, the wax-covered capacitors went as well. Um, I even replaced a lot of the resistors. Even though folks say uh, you don't need to replace resistors, I found that most of these, while they should have only been plus or minus 20%, were, um, they were plus 25 to 30%. Uh, they were way out of spec. And as soon as I recapped everything and put it all back together, um, I found that the other tube started working. And uh, here is an example of what it sounds like when it plays. There is relatively little hum. In fact, the more I ran it, the less hum there was. And uh, it sounds terrific. Now, because it has the old crystal cartridge, I'm pretty much stuck playing only late 40s and 50s uh, mono records as those have wider grooves. And this old cartridge would probably tear the, the grooves right out of a modern record, but that's okay. I've got plenty of record players to play the modern stuff. It'll be fun to have another one to play the old stuff. Enjoy. Dear, this evening seemed to go softly fast. Give me five minutes more. Let me stay, let me stay in your arms. Here am I begging for only five minutes more. 